As a result of the squeeze theorem, we have two special trig limits. And these two trig limits, they're going to eventually appear on our memory card, and we want to have them memorized just because they come up so frequently. I don't want to actually have to use the squeeze theorem. You saw how difficult it was, right? So it's been proven. We can see that. We want to understand that on the left-hand side, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. I don't even want to think about it. I want to just, oh yeah, that's right, that one's equal to 1. And then we have one that is related to that one, which is, that one doesn't look like sine x over x. It's a different function, right? So this one is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is equal to 0. This one here, we didn't actually prove it. I'm just giving it to you for free. But it will be one of the questions I do believe from your homework that you have to try to prove. And you might be going, well, how do I do it? How do I find or show that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1, over co 1 minus cosine x over x is equal to 0? Do I have to use the squeeze theorem? And the answer to that is, uh-uh, no, you sure don't. Um, as a matter of fact, you're going to use one of the other methods and use some kind of like trig substitution here. And so here's trig substitution is now going to be our next strategy as you're going to see in these next two examples. I want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of, of tangent x over x and the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 4x over x. Okay? All right, then. So come back over here so I have some, some writing space. Now, notice that this tangent x over x, it looks pretty similar to what we have here, right? It looks pretty similar. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can force this to happen in uh, this limit. And I think I can. And the reason why I can is because, you know, uh, tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm just going to do some substitution here. I'm going to limit as x approach 0 of sine x over cosine x, so there's the top part, all of this over x. And I know that, like for this complex fraction, I can do a couple of different things. Like I can just take this cosine, I know that it's supposed to go down to the bottom, and the reason why it does is because we'd be multiplying by a common denominator here, which is cosine over cosine. And then the cosines on the top would cancel, and you can see that it goes down to the bottom. So I have the limit as x goes to 0 of, uh, let's see, I'll just, I'm just going to write it like this, sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. And now we have a limit law that can come into play. As long as the individual limits exist, like the sine x over x and the 1 over cosine, I can just multiply these two limits together, right? That's that product law for limits. Well, does this one exist? Pretty much, we just prove that it's equal to 1. And how about cosine or 1 over cosine? Well, let's see. If I were to directly substitute in a 0 here, cosine of 0 is 1. This is 1 times 1. That's equal to 1. Well, there you go. So notice that we were able to get that by substituting this one in here. And that's the usefulness of both of these by trig substitution. Uh, I try to force both of these, one of these things to appear. All right, again, on number two, I have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 4x over x. This one, it still looks sort of like this. However, I got this 4 that's messing stuff up a little bit, and I can fix that, though. So think of it instead of sine x over x. Think of it as sine of whatever you want. Remember, we used theta before. So think of it as the limit as... Um, I don't know, whatever this is, I'm going to make it a k. I can make it some sort of k goes to, in, goes to 0, not to infinity. Sine of k sinc over k. And it doesn't matter what is inside here as long as the bottom also matches. This one's a k, so is this one down at the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. This one's a 4x, then I need to make this one a 4x on the bottom. I can do that pretty easily if I just multiply the bottom by 4. But if I multiply the bottom by 4, I need to multiply the top by 4. It's a fancy one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this by a 4 over 4. Okay. So let me rewrite this as the limit 
So x goes to 0 of 4 times the sine of 4x over 4x. And, and now I can see that these two things match up, this 4x and this 4x on the bottom. I could, this limit here is supposed to be, whoops, this limit here, come on, is supposed to be 1. That's going to go to 1. It doesn't matter that this is a 4 instead of a, a 1x, and I can show you that pretty easily on Desmos, because why not? Because I know you're sitting there going, no, it's a 4. It's not a 1 like before. I'm going to show you it doesn't even matter. Uh, why don't I start with a y equals, so y equals, and then I'll do my sine of 4x this time, so 4x, and then, you know, the 4x, of course, is, um, it makes this one, it shrinks it horizontally, right? It compresses it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to divide it by 4x, uh, so divided by, and put a 4x on the bottom there. So let's come back over here to the graph, and then I can see, bang, look at that. It's still equal to 1 right there. It didn't matter what was in there. Okay, so coming back to the notability thing, I'm going to break this limit up just like I did before using limit loss, and it's basically this. It's the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 4x over 4x. This piece is equal to 1, and the limit of a constant function is that constant, so this is equal to 4. And there you have it. All right, so this concludes pretty much this lesson. I mean, surely it's been long enough. Do you want me to put a couple of more exercises in there? Okay, I've got it. All right, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, for the rest of us, let's just kind of recap here. Remember that when we are evaluating limits, analytically. So we're not looking necessarily at a calculator or a table of values. We're having to do it by hand. The very first thing that you want to do is direct substitution. And direct substitution will always work as long as the number that you're plugging into your function is in the domain. And that's going to work for your polynomial, your power, your rational, your radical, and your trigonometric functions. Where it doesn't work is where we get that indeterminate form. We get something like 0 over 0, and then we have to try to do a particular thing. We're going to use one of these little strategies, and these strategies include like factoring and dividing out common factors. Or maybe, maybe we have to rationalize the numerator. We've got some square roots in the top. We need to get it down to the bottom, and it could go either direction. Maybe it's in the bottom. We need to get it up to the top, okay? Maybe we are going to apply the squeeze theorem. Probably not. Um, so uh, to be perfectly honest with you, the squeeze theorem, it's not actually tested on the AP exam. However, see, I tell you this now after you've gone through all of the videos, just because we need it for sine x over x, and those of us in BC calculus, we need it for the series part, which is in the last the very, very end of our, of our uh, course. Anyway, um, applying the squeeze theorem. Yeah, pretend like you want to do that. Okay, and then maybe use some trig sub substitutions, as we just saw in the last couple of examples. Or maybe we just have to simplify some complex fractions by multiplying by, you know, a common denominator. All right, well, that therefore ends our lesson on being able to find limits using these limit laws. And uh, when we reconvene in class, here's our assignment. <laughs>